Hey folks, it's Eddie G, DM Fumble, so that means we're fumbling around. Today I want to talk about this, the D&D Creature Case. Why am I doing a review for a product that's been out for almost a year and a half? Well, if you've been on Facebook recently, especially any of the D&D groups, you've been inundated with images like this. Or this. Or this. In the future, I'll be doing reviews for the Terrain Case and maybe the Warriors of Crin board game. But for today, let's just focus on the Creature Case. This product originally retailed for $49.99, but if you have an Ollie's Bargain Outlet in your area, you can get it for the staggeringly low price of $2.99. Apparently, they didn't sell well and someone dumped a massive amount of pennies on the dollar. For this review, I want to look over this product from top to bottom, inside and out, and see, is it worth it at $49.99 or even at $2.99? First, let's start with the outer cardboard box. It's full color with great artwork showing some of the types of creatures contained within. The background pattern matches the case that you're going to see inside. The backside also does a great job showing you what's included in the case as well as listing everything inside. Maybe some action shots of the discs on a battle map or their corresponding terrain case would be nice, but they're not necessarily needed for seasoned DMs. On the downside, this cardboard box cannot easily be reused, regardless of what it says on the marketing materials on the D&D website. It's not like a tuck box where you can slip the case back in and lock it back into place when not in use. There's so much glue holding this together, you either rip the cardboard box apart trying to open it, or you try to cut the cardboard with a knife and risk damaging the actual creature case inside. If you want to save the box, my recommendation would be to use your hands and try to rip carefully. In my case, I'm trying to save the cardboard so I can reuse it in terrain crafting. Well, at least that's my plan anyway. Once you have it open, ta-da! Once you have it open, the case itself is extremely nice. There's a lot of quality in this case. In fact, maybe more than there needs to be. And I'll come back to that point later. The top of the case has a nice silky black rope handle. The rope is smooth and thick, so that holding it doesn't dig into your fingers. The top also has a metallic lid that helps keep the case closed when not in use. The box is a very dark maroon with a metallic spot print that gives it a shimmer as it catches the light. The front and back have this huge D&D logo, the ampersand logo, in metallic print going from yellow to a deep red. The bottom features the title, D&D Campaign Creature Case, but the same metallic color as that logo. By putting the box title on the bottom, it can fit nicely on your bookshelf with the bottom acting like the title and spine of a book. When you finally open the case, on the left hand side, you have this nice piece of artwork of various creatures. This artwork is actually mounted on a thick cardstock and can be easily pulled off with little to no damage to the underside lid. If you pick up a couple of these or the corresponding terrain cases, you can easily make your own Dungeon Master screen with these pieces, something I plan to do. The right side holds a number of goodies. At the top is a tray with a single folder. That holds all of the clings that are gonna go on the discs. The tray has space for more folders. Once we get rid of this filler piece, the tray has space now for more folders. It can easily also be used as a dice tray or with some crafting, part of that DIY DMG screen I was just talking about. Underneath the tray is where the discs are held. Each case has 64 discs, 40 of which are one inch, 20 are two inches, and four of them are three inches. These are evenly divided among four colors, white, black, blue, and red. You can store them in these holders or you can use baggies and the open space below, especially if you plan to merge a couple of sets into one box. I have to say, I really like the discs in this case, even the small ones. They have great weight so you know they're going to stay put when you put them on the table. And the various colors allow you to differentiate between enemies and players or whatever you might have. What I was thinking of doing is having all of my players, allies, and any mounts use the white discs and then distribute the remaining colors among 
whatever enemies I might have them fighting. If I only have a few of a certain type of creature, I typically give it a unique color or spread those enemies out among the different colors. This way I can keep track of who is attacking and killing who. As for putting on the clings, I didn't have any issues putting them on or taking them off. As a longtime Lego fan and builder, I have a lot of experience putting on those pesky stickers. And unlike those clings, with Lego, mostly you only get one shot. Let me know in the comments if you've had any issues or a hard time with the clings, and I may do a video showing how I put them on. Notice the clings has images for all the artwork, as well as a few special letters that you can use to differentiate some of the same creatures, or some stars that might denote creatures that have special abilities, unlike the normal standard creature image that we're looking at. It should be noted that if you remove the top tray, the space on the right side is just big enough to hold a hardback, making this a really good traveling case. Also, if you get rid of this cardboard insert, you can probably fit more supplies, like maps, pens, dice, pencils, whatever it might, whatever you might need. So that's our detailed look at the creature case. Now let's do an overall review. Are you enjoying this video? I don't have a Patreon or a tip jar. So if you're in a position to help out and want to support this channel, please consider picking up one of my low cost offerings over on my DMs Guild page. There'll be a link below. Thank you for your support. And now back to the show. I'm conflicted as I sit here thinking about my overall review. Is the creature case worth the original $49.99? Like most things, yes and no. No, it's not worth the $50 for a handful of plastic discs and some clings, or as I like to call them, color forms. But on the other hand, yes, it is worth that $50 when you factor in all of the hidden value that I showed before. Cardboard for terrain, parts for your own DMG screen, a makeshift dice tray, and a case that can easily hold all of the possible supplies you need for any given game session, along with those creature discs. I'm not sure all that extra value is worth $50, but it makes the product worth a lot more than you imagine on first glance, or even on what's described or advertised on the box. And that's one of the two reasons why I think this product ultimately failed. First, you have the obvious. The creature case was released during the tail end of the pandemic, when I'm sure many groups were still playing virtually and had no need for these physical tools. And secondly, the perceived value at $50 for this item isn't there. But as I said, this item has a lot more actual value that is hidden to most eyes. Now, is this product worth $3? The only answer is yes, unless you already have an extensive miniature collection or you don't like mixing 2D and 3D minis. I myself don't like mixing 2D and 3D minis, but as someone who DMs a lot of conventions, this is easily going to be my new go-to convention kit. Between the discs, the clings, and all the value you can scrounge and recycle from this case, $3 is a steal, which is why I picked up a few for me and for my gaming group. If you can find them at your local Ollie's, and I hear they're selling out at some locations, get a set. And if not, I hear some of the online retailers are selling them for around $20, which is over half off the original price and still a good deal. So there you have it, a look at the Campaign Case Creatures. Coming soon, my companion review for Campaign Case Terrain. Cheers, until next time.